Small luxury EVs are thick on the ground nowadays, so if you want to stand out against competition like the Genesis GV60, Volvo XC40 Recharge, and Tesla Model Y, then you need to bring a compelling mix of innovative features, attractive design, and impressive range to the table. Well, the 2023 Lexus RZ450e hits a few of those marks incredibly well, and it misses a few others catastrophically. Before I give away the ending, please be sure to subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media so that we can keep on bringing you interesting reviews and news like this. And as always, you can check out my full review of the Lexus RZ450e at the link in the description. Now the Lexus RZ should feel very familiar to anyone who's driving an NX or an RX crossover at the moment, and that's very deliberate. But there are a few key details that bring the RZ into the future just a little bit. That starts up front where you get a derivation of the company's new spindle body design. We're moving away from spindle grills as we move to a fully electric future, but the company is still maintaining that particular design ethos by bringing everything to a point right around the Lexus logo up front. That means the headlights kind of squint in like that, and then you have this little prow that runs the width of the front end. From there, however, it kind of explodes back over the front fenders and swoops down over the rear fenders to create these little miniature tail fin type things, which we first saw on the Lexus UX. The RZ's unique ducktail spoiler improves aerodynamics, and it also features vortex generators on the top corners of the roof, which both keep the rear glass clean in the absence of a windshield wiper and help reduce lift while also improving straight line stability in crosswinds. That futuristic yet familiar design carries over to the cabin as well. As you can see, this is a pretty typical Lexus interior layout with the standard 14 inch Lexus interface right here and a digital instrument cluster right in front of you and kind of your typical controls and everything located on the center stack where you'd expect them to be. But beyond some of these familiar feeling bits right here, Lexus has done a lot to make the RZ feel unique and forward thinking, starting with the gear selector. Now, as you can see, the company has done away with its little toggle style gear change in favor of a rotary shifter. Push down and twist over to get into drive, back the other way to get into reverse, or throw it in park like that and you're good to go. It's very easy to get used to. And then the materials that Lexus interior designers chose for the RZ also kind of underscore the vehicle's commitment to sustainability, if you will. For example, this is the first Lexus that I can remember in a very long time that's completely done away with leather. Lexus has been going toward new Lux faux leather upholstery for the seats for a long time, but this one actually has it on the steering wheel, making this a truly vegan, animal-free interior. And then if you go for the flagship luxury model, you ditch the new Lux upholstery on the seats in favor of this really unusual, very premium feeling micro suede. Now Lexus says that this micro suede is comprised of 30% recycled materials, making this cabin just a little bit more renewable. Also adding to the sustainability appeal is this wood toned charcoal finish. This isn't genuine wood, but you would never know it from looking at it. I also really love this particular car's color palette. These ivory accents liven up this sea of blue gray, and it kind of helps the car feel modern and unique and bright and airy. It's a great way of adding visual appeal without resorting to lime green accents or crystal ball gear selectors like you might find in one of the RZ's chief competitors. Luckily, that legendary Lexus feeling of luxury and solidity carries over once you hit the road in the RZ. I am genuinely surprised at how differently this thing drives compared to the Toyota BZ4X or Subaru Solterra. Those cars can honestly feel a little bit tinny or something like that, and you don't get any of that in the RZ. The suspension is very well composed. It does a great job of insulating you from body motions and road noise. Overall, it just feels like a much more premium product. Now, part of that is down to the increased power output of the RZ. You get standard dual motor all-wheel drive, but you still get more power than an all-wheel drive BZ4X. 308 horsepower compared to just 215. So you definitely feel a little bit more confident when you're driving down the road in the RZ than you would in the kind of pokey BZ4X. We could also have a long conversation about the Lexus RZ's throttle tuning. Now, when you're merging on a freeway like I'm doing right now, you do just get this fantastic rush of power like you'd expect in any other EV. 
but the RZ is a little bit more measured and a little bit more careful with the amount of torque that it gives you when you pin that throttle. But in contrast to some EVs, the Lexus RZ takes a more approachable and gentle tack. You definitely get plenty of acceleration when you mash the skinny pedal, but it doesn't like throw you in the back of your seat like something like the Genesis GV60 Performance. Instead, you kind of get this smooth rush that gets you where you're going very, very quickly, but never feels out of control or wild or Larry. It's perfect for a Lexus. Now, once you do get up to speed, the Lexus RZ does have a few little flaws in terms of noise control. It's very difficult for any EV to manage wind and tire noise perfectly because you don't have this big engine under the hood making a ton of racket and smothering some of those secondary noises and sounds that you might hear when you're driving down the road. The Lexus RZ does its best to manage those and you don't have an exceptional amount of road noise over some surfaces, but then when you get on concrete highways like you see plenty of in Southern California, you do kind of get this grittiness that just kind of attacks your eardrums. It's unfortunate, but honestly, it's probably unavoidable. I'm pretty sure I felt the exact same way about the Genesis GV60, so I can't fault Lexus too much on that respect. Aside from those minor and understandable noise complaints, the Lexus feels like a thoroughly luxurious automobile. The seats are comfortable, the ride is very smooth, even on horrendously broken pavement, and overall, it just kind of feels like a Lexus, exactly like you'd expect. Now, I will say that even if the Lexus RZ is very comfortable and confident, it's nowhere near sporty. There's nothing remotely resembling enthusiasm in this car. The suspension is fine. It's perfect at soaking up broken pavement and city streets and potholes and the like, but it doesn't really stand up to a really aggressive driving experience. And the steering wheel is numb, numb, numb. There is no information about the front wheels coming to your fingertips, which kind of erases confidence when you're really pushing hard. And that's with this standard steering. If you go for the drive-by-wire system that's gonna be coming within one or two model years, you're even more disconnected from the driving experience. So you really shouldn't get this vehicle if you want something to really blow your hair back. A Genesis GV60 Performance would be a much better fit in that respect. The Lexus RZ is also missing a few key features that we've kind of come to expect out of modern EVs. For example, one pedal driving. It's pretty frustrating in a modern EV, especially when there are products like the Genesis GV60 that do one pedal driving so well and so intuitively. Luckily, the RZ compensates just a bit in traffic clogged driving by including the entire suite of Lexus's advanced driver assistance and safety features. That means you get adaptive cruise control that actually allows you to take your hands off the wheel when you're stuck in a traffic jam, as well as lane centering technology, lane departure prevention, blind spot monitoring, the whole gamut. In fact, you also get front and rear cross traffic detection so that if the car thinks you're about to pull out in front of traffic, it will prevent you from causing an accident by fully applying the brakes. That's not the only trick piece of technology that Lexus includes in the RZ either. For example, if you're driving on a beautiful sunny day through, let's just say San Diego, and you either wanna work on your tan or observe the palm trees passing overhead, you just hit this little button and this dynamic sky panoramic roof goes from opaque to transparent. Now, admittedly, that's not a brand new piece of technology for the automotive industry, but it's still very cool to use and to play with. Conversely, if you feel like you're getting too much sun and starting to get a little bit burned as I am right now, you hit this button again and that formerly transparent roof goes opaque. It's very, very cool. And it's only a $550 option, so go ahead and tick that box. Now, if you find yourself on a chilly morning and the sun's rays just aren't doing it for you, Lexus does include a very cool radiant knee heater for the driver and front passenger. The net result is instant heat, which when working in conjunction with the heated seats and steering wheel, reduces the load on the climate controls just a little bit. That means better comfort and improved efficiency at the same time. Managing those climate controls and a host of other vehicle functions is the Lexus interface, which is displayed here on a 14 inch touchscreen standard on all models. I've experienced Lexus interface before in the NX and RX. I do have just a few complaints. For example, there still isn't a home button, which means switching between different vehicle functions and CarPlay and stuff like that can get just a little bit confusing. And you do still have to interact with the touchscreen just a little bit too much when you wanna make fine adjustments to the climate control. At the very least though, you do get physical volume knobs and temperature controls for the driver and passenger. So far, it all sounds pretty good, right? It's a comfortable car. It feels appropriately Lexus-y. It looks futuristic. There's some cool technology features. What's not to love? Well, it's when you pull over to recharge that the cracks begin to appear in the RZ's facade. For starters, it only offers a charge rate of about 150 kilowatts, which falls behind the 235 kilowatts 
of the Genesis GV60. And once you're fully recharged, the RZ will only do about 220 miles of range if you go for the base 18 inch wheels. Option up to the much more attractive 20s, as you see on my tester right here, and range drops all the way down to just 196 miles. That's not just bad for a luxury EV, that's bad for an EV period. And it's well down on the XC40 recharges 224 miles and the GV60's 248 miles. Again, to say nothing of the Tesla, which can go 300 miles or more between charges. Overall, it feels like you're missing out on the EV experience by going for an RZ compared to some of its other competition. But Lexus does have one little ace up its sleeve that might be appealing to prospective customers. Buy or lease an RZ and they will give you 30 days of free loaner vehicles in the first three years of ownership. That way, if you're planning on taking a long trip or if you need more cargo space or towing capacity, you could swap out your RZ at your Lexus dealer for an ES vehicle, an RX, an LX, a hybrid, anything you want. The downside is, if you are a dyed-in-the-wool EV enthusiast, you will go back to burning gas for those 30 days of loaner vehicles, but the upside is you do have a lot more flexibility than you'd get even with the best electric cars. As is so often the case, it all comes down to priorities. If you regularly need to take advantage of public charging, or if you drive more than 150 miles or so in a single day, I think there are probably some better options for you than the Lexus RZ. However, if you have regular access to private charging, or if your commute falls within that more typical 25 to 50 miles every day, the Lexus RZ has a lot of great features going for it. For starters, it feels very familiar to anyone who's driven another Lexus crossover, melding the best of those vehicles, smooth a quiet ride and a comfortable cabin with zero tailpipe emissions and instantaneous electric power. I think the RZ is actually a perfect augment to an existing two or a three car garage. Although it might not be ready for solo car status just yet, it brings the best of Lexus into a zero emissions future. Thanks for watching.